Namaskar and welcome to another lecture in this course on concrete engineering and technology. We are talking about revising the fundamentals of concrete, proportioning of mixes, stages in concrete construction, special concretes, mechanisms of deterioration in concrete structures and reinforcement and also issues relating to maintenance of concrete structures. We will continue our discussion today with special concretes and to reiterate what makes a concrete or a concrete operation special is the fact that one or more of the following are outside a predefined normal range. It could be in terms of the material used, the conditions or the environment in which concrete is being placed. It could be in terms of the property of the concrete that we are casting, the method of placing or the conditions in which the concrete is being placed. So, today's discussion will focus on a special method of placing the concrete and we will be talking about roller compacted concrete. Now, what is roller compacted concrete? It is a concrete that is compacted by a roller that is the fresh concrete that we have should be such that it is dry to the extent of being able to resist the sinking of a roller and it should be wet to the extent that the mortar can be distributed within the concrete through this vibration. It is not vibrator or compacted using internal vibrators or needle vibrators. Instead there is a vibratory roller which is moved on the surface of concrete in order to compact this concrete. And therefore, given the fact that this roller could be quite heavy, the concrete has to be such that it is dry to the extent that the roller does not sink and it should be wet to the extent that mortar can still be moved around within the voids of the aggregates. The concrete can thus be defined as or looked upon as a very dry a zero slump mix which is placed using dump trucks and compacted using a vibratory roller. Now, this has found applications in primarily two areas of engineered concrete construction dams and pavements and we will see in a moment the reason for that. Let us take a look at a large block of concrete such as what we would expect in a gravity dam or long road which is being made with concrete. We are talking of rigid pavement constructions. So, in these two cases we can have block construction that is we break this large block down into smaller blocks let us say block 1, block 2 and block 3 and these three blocks are cast one after another with a suitable gap and so on and so forth. That is one way of casting this large concrete block. Another possibility could be that instead of blocks we talk in terms of a layered construction in which case we divide this block not as blocks like we did last time that is this way we do not do that. Instead we divide the block in layers and cast this as layer 1 followed by layer 2 and finally followed by layer 3. So, there is a fundamental difference between casting this large block with blocks which is like this. or in terms of layers which is like this. Now, what are some of the differences between block construction and layered construction? Block construction needs form work to be erected and the concrete to be placed in relatively and concrete to be placed in relatively large heights. As a result of that it becomes more difficult 
for the heat that is generated on account of hydration of cements to escape to the surface. Whereas, in the layered construction the surface area is very large and the thickness is relatively small. Thickness being relatively small facilitates movement of heat into the atmosphere and helps prevent develop any thermal gradients within the concrete. So, given a certain set of conditions the chances of thermal cracking happening in layered construction is much smaller compared to block construction and that is one of the reasons why roller compacted concrete or this kind of layered construction is preferred. Basically roller compacted concrete refers to this kind of layered construction where each layer of concrete is cast and then compacted by moving rollers on this surface. So, to that extent it is similar to compaction of soil when we do any kind of road construction or we want to consolidate the soil we move rollers layer by layer to compact the soil and that is exactly what we do when we are compacting the concrete. So, that is what is the very fundamental or very preliminary understanding of roller compacted concrete. Now, continuing with the applications it is mainly used where large volumes of concrete are required with the further condition that the concrete is largely unreinforced. The presence of reinforcement makes the placement of concrete difficult and adds a very different dimension to the casting and therefore, as far as roller compacted concrete is concerned attention is generally confined to plain concrete. And as I mentioned the conditions which are met for these and the two areas where these conditions are met are pavements and gravity dams. So, these are the prime structures which are cast or can be made using this technology of roller compacted concrete. So, in this case the speciality or the non normal nature lies in the method of compaction that we have adopted instead of using normal internal vibration we are using a very special kind of compaction method. And this necessitates that we take proper care in all other steps it's material selection, proportioning, determination of properties and so on and so forth as we shall see in our discussion. There is this set of pictures which will tell us or give us an idea as to what roller compacted concrete is all about. So, here we see concrete being dumped at a site using a tipper. So, if we can make out that this concrete is nothing but more or less moist gravel or it is very stiff zero slump concrete. It is very different from the kind of concrete that we have normally seen which has a slump of let us say 10 centimeters or 8 centimeters or maybe sometimes a little more this concrete looks very different. As far as moving such blocks of concrete or moving such fresh concrete is concerned it is very common to move it with bulldozers. So, the dozer basically spreads this concrete around in the area in which it is required followed by the spreading we have this kind of a vibratory roller that is moved on the concrete to compact this layer. So, we have this layer of concrete which is now being compacted by moving a vibratory roller on the surface. And this picture here is a overview of a construction site where roller compacted concrete is being used. So, there are tippers, there are dozers and there are rollers. So, it is a v so it is an example of highly mechanized construction and these pictures I hope help you understand why we need large free areas of concrete placing, why we do not want reinforcement to be present in the concrete as far as the interference with the concreting process is concerned. So, this is a bird's eye view or a rough understanding of roller compacted concrete.
Now, once we go back to the let us get back to the description of this concrete once again, it is a relatively stiff mixture of aggregate cementitious materials and water that is compacted by vibratory rollers and hardens into concrete. And depending on the requirements, the strength of RCC which is roller compacted concrete may be specified to be in the range of 25 to 30 MPa. So, now this strength is not outside the normal we very often deal with 25 to 30 MPa kind of concrete except that this concrete is placed very differently, compacted very differently and due to that reason in the fresh state it looks very different. The constituent materials for RCC are blended in a mixing plant into a heterogeneous mass which has the consistency similar to damp gravel or zero slump concrete. So, the basic principle of concrete engineering is not violated, we still have the same materials that is aggregate cementitious materials that is cement and maybe fly ash and water except that we are now compacting it using rollers and finally, the product is of course, hardening into concrete. As far as the layer thickness is concerned, we will discuss it a little more later on, usually the number adopted is about 250 to 300 mm in one layer. Now, this layer thickness is related to several parameters or factors including the size of the aggregate, including the compactability of the concrete that depends on the type of roller being used, the effectiveness of the roller in terms of its ability to compact the concrete and so on. The layers are compacted with steel vibratory rollers with final compaction sometimes being provided by rubber tire rollers. So, this is a matter of pure engineering and working at sites and as far as the advantage is concerned, we have low cement consumption because the water content itself is very low. We have minimal form work cost because the method of placement as we could see that there is hardly any form work required except at the edges. There is a minimized risk of thermal stresses as heat dissipation is facilitated by the large surface area and smaller thickness which means there is low temperature rise and virtually no thermal ingredients. We have a reduced overall cost in terms of transportation, placing and compaction and finally, therefore, roller compacted concrete gives us a cheaper and a faster option for certain types of construction. It cannot obviously be used for normal construction in terms of buildings or bridges and so on. As far as the cost saving is concerned, the RCC pavements, if we are making if we are making pavements or roads using roller compacted concrete, we do not use dowels and steel reinforcement of forms and this results in significant savings. As far as the increased placement speed is concerned, that helps us a lot. This coupled with the fact that RCC or roller compacted concrete can be looked upon as basically wet compacted gravel, it stands to reason that light traffic can be allowed to go on this pavement more or less immediately after the concrete has been placed. Of course, heavy traffic cannot be allowed unless certain amount of strength development has taken place. So, this helps us a lot as far as using roller compacted concretes in pavement construction is concerned. Now, because of the very low water content, the mixing of roller compacted concretes is not often very productive if we use a central mixing plant. So, we often use a pug mill which is a high energy mixing device and we have to be very careful as far as the moisture content of the RCC is concerned. Even a small increase or an overdose of water or an underdose of water could make the concrete very different and if there is more water the roller may begin to leave marks and that is something which we do not want. We do not want a pavement where the roller is moving over this width let us say to leave marks along the edges. Which brings us to the theoretical studies on vibration energy and compaction effects. See what we are looking at is trying to place a concrete having a certain thickness and this has 
some amount of aggregates and the rest of it is mortar. Now, if we are trying to apply a vibratory load at the surface and what we want to happen here is compaction. That is we want the mortar to move into the voids if there are any voids within the aggregate system and we want to get rid of any air that may be trapped inside. Now, the effectiveness of whether or not this concrete here at the bottom would get compacted because of this kind of vibratory loads being applied at the surface would depend on the thickness, the characteristics that we have here of the vibration in terms of the amplitude and the frequency, the mass of the roller sitting there and also the properties of the intermediate concrete. So, with all these factors put together, we can define densities of this concrete as a variable or as a parameter which can be used for quality control of roller compacted concretes. It is very important that concretes are compacted. Now, in the case of roller compacted concretes, it would depend on the kind of energy that is being impacted on the kind of energy that is imparted to the concrete, which is related to the, like I said the frequency, the amplitude of vibration and also the number of passes. How many times does the roller pass over a given section? So, now one way of writing the specification as far as roller compacted concretes or quality roller compacted concretes is concerned is to say that okay, such and such a roller would make 3 passes or 6 passes or something like that or it can be said that it will be a certain number of passes or a certain amount of density that is obtained in the concrete because that is really the performance parameter. So, we are talking in terms of defining density of the roller compacted concrete as an important parameter in defining the quality of the roller compacted concrete as placed. Needless to say now that roller selection is an important part now of the construction using roller compacted concretes. And some of the considerations that govern the selection of a roller for use in RCC construction could be the ease of maneuverability, compactive force the drum size, frequency and amplitude of vibration and the operating speed besides maintenance cost and the ease of operation. We should also remember that the roller should also be compatible with the size of the project, workability of the concrete, lift depth, extent of consolidation and space limitations. So, all these things put together would help us choose the right roller to be used at a particular site. Needless to say that if we do not choose the right roller, we will not get the right density and if we do not get the right density, we do not get quality construction. Similarly, the project might be delayed or it may take more time than if we choose the roller appropriately. So, we must choose the equipment that we have or that we use in a particular site very, very carefully considering the variables involved. Getting back to the discussion on thickness which I said was about 250 to 300 mm and it is critical from the point of view of properties of concrete in situ and the quality control. On the one hand there is a relationship between the maximum size of the aggregate used whereas, on the other it is related to the type of vibratory equipment used and only a certain thickness can be effectively vibrated with a certain equipment. The extent of compaction achieved is related to the weight and other characteristics of the roller and the number of passes. So, all these things put together an engineer must choose the thickness of the roller compacted concrete to be used in a particular project. So, if we are having a pavement which requires us to have let us say 600 thick concrete, 600 mm thick concrete. 
it is up to the engineer to decide whether he will do 2 layers of 300 or 3 layers of 200 and so on and choose his equipment accordingly. Often times depending on the equipment available the kind of concrete and the thickness can be chosen. Let us now talk about materials in RCC that is the ingredients. Now, the ingredients are not any different from normal concretes except that in the case of RCC the aggregates constitute about 70 to 80 percent by volume and naturally they should be hard durable particles and should be appropriately evaluated. Appropriately evaluated means we already have the tests to carry out evaluations of aggregates in terms of their physical properties and those tests are no different simply because the aggregate is being used in RCC. So, we need to carry out the same tests we may have different specifications. Another thing to remember is that the volume of aggregate is higher here and therefore, that has implications in terms of the entire properties and so on and therefore, it is very important that the aggregates are properly chosen. In the fresh state the aggregates affect the workability and the potential to segregate and also the ease of consolidation with the vibratory roller. It is not only the ease of vibration, but it is also the ease of movement that is being pushed around the way we saw using a dozer. So, if we use very large particles it may become difficult to move them around using dozers and ensure that they are uniformly distributed throughout the concrete mass and that is something which we cannot afford. At the end of it throughout the structure whether we do it by blocks or we do it with layers the assumption that the concrete at different places as far as that structure is concerned is the same cannot be violated. So, we must ensure that the concrete is a homogeneous mass throughout the structure and that could be compromised if we use very large particles as far as coarse aggregates are concerned because of their tendency to promote segregation, the difficulties involved in moving them around and so on. We must also remember that RCC mixes are not as cohesive as normal concrete and therefore, aggregate segregation may also be a consideration and larger aggregates reduce voids and thus the paste demand. So, if we increase the size of the coarse aggregate the surface area reduces and the paste required as far as concrete is concerned goes down. That was our understanding and it still is our understanding as far as concrete engineering is concerned. On the other hand we must remember that large aggregates pose a challenge in handling spreading and compaction as we have discussed just now and therefore, as a compromise the maximum size used as far as roller compacted concrete is concerned is generally about 20 millimeters. Fines add to the cohesion of the concrete and contribute to filling the voids and therefore, should be considered for use. As far as cementitious materials are concerned any cement can be used, but from the point of view of the heat of hydration use of low heat cements may be considered. Having said that we should remember that roller compacted concrete is after all being placed in relatively thin layers and thermal stresses are not likely to be a major problem and therefore, this issue is rather insignificant as far as most roller compacted concrete constructions is concerned. Other materials such as blended hydraulic cements, ground slag or fly ash may be used after using tests to ensure that the quality of construction and the quality of concrete in a particular project is not compromised. Now, chemical admixtures are a weapon that a concrete engineer has now to alter the properties of concrete, but now in this case when we are talking of using chemical admixtures in roller compacted concrete kind of a construction we should reiterate and recall that the effectiveness of chemical admixtures is related to the cement properties and also the amount of cement present in the matrix. In fact, the chemical admixture added itself is dosed in terms of the cement content. So, when we say 1 percent chemical admixture by weight of cement naturally if the cement content in the mix 
is very low, the total amount of admixture is also low. We may like to use retarders in certain cases, because they help delay the setting time and also give us some time as far as compaction is concerned and preventing cold joints between layers. So, we may like to use a retarder in roller compacted concrete, if we want to have some more time for compacting the concrete and that would depend on what is the kind of mobilization we have, whether we have the right kind of dozers to move the concrete around and the right kind of vibrators to compact the concrete. If there is a problem there, we may like to have or we may want to have more time during which the concrete can be compacted and that is when retarders come in handy. But given the consistency of the RCC mixes that is in terms of slump and workability, the real effectiveness of chemical admixtures is rather limited. In fact, as far as air entrainment is concerned, it has been found that it is difficult to control the air content in RCC construction partly because of the small cement content and the method of compaction and so on. Not only the dosage of the air entraining agent required is much higher than in normal concrete, but also the effectiveness in increasing the durability of the concrete against freezing and thawing has been found to be suspect. Having said that the durability of RCC construction as far as cyclic freezing and thawing is concerned is suspect. I would also like to add that there is literature which suggests that if roller compacted concrete pavements are covered with asphalt for a certain thickness, the durability of the RCC is no longer a problem. Continuing our discussion, let us talk about proportioning an RCC mix. Now, here given the very special method of compaction, sometimes we use the soil compaction approach to proportion of RCC mix, which is different from our traditional method of proportioning concrete mixes, which we have practiced so far. In this case, what we do is we use principles of soil mechanics and soil compaction to produce a dense mix, where there is an optimum water content to produce maximum dry density. We know that in soil mechanics or in soil or in geotechnical engineering, we have the concept where if we continue to add water little by little to a soil mass, the density increases up to a certain point in time and then reduces. So, this moisture content at which the density is higher or the highest is called the optimum moisture content or the OMC. And that concept is what is used in proportioning an RCC mix in this approach. We must remember that in this case, the amount of paste may not fill all the voids in the concrete. We look at concrete in this kind of an approach as a material made up of different particle made up of particles of different sizes and gradation. So, we know the gradation of the aggregate particles being used, we know the gradation of the cement being used and what we try to do is to find the optimum moisture content, which would give the maximum density. Naturally, in this approach, the concept of water cement ratio is not so relevant. So, to reiterate, we have an optimum moisture content and that gives us the highest compaction and that gives us highest strength. So, the strength is not really being talked about now in terms of the water cement ratio of the concrete mix, but it is being talked about as related to the moisture content in the roller compacted concrete mix. Now, as against this, we of course, have the concrete engineering approach, where the paste content is high. High paste content means the amount of paste exceeds the 
voids in the concrete and that is the traditional approach that we already know that we have the water content then we have the cement content we make sure that the paste content is higher than the void content and proportion the mix and so on. The functional parameters for the design of concrete mix could be compressive and shear strength, permeability etcetera and these could also depend on the type of construction. So, in the case of roller compacted concrete as we saw concrete is placed in layers and therefore, the shear strength and the bond strength between layers is a very important parameter in addition to the compressive strength of the concrete per se. Also given the fact that roller compacted concrete is used very often in dam construction permeability is an important consideration and the specifications for dam concrete very often lay down a maximum acceptable permeability of water determined by a certain method. Now, in the case of roller compacted concrete the issue is more critical because concrete is being placed in layers and these layers if they do not bond properly, if they do not bond in a manner that the concrete becomes monolithic the chances of permeability through the joints is very high. So, it is not only important that the permeability be controlled through the concrete, but it is also important that permeability be controlled through the joints. Whether or not we have specific requirements in terms of having a maximum permeability through the joints and so on that is concerned it would depend on whether or not a protective layer of normal concrete is provided on the upstream phase or not. Now, what is this protective layer? Let us explain that, let us discuss that. If we have a dam which is shown here and it is cast in layers as shown here. So, we have a dam where we have cast it in layers using roller compacted concrete kind of a method. If this was the upstream side which had a certain amount of water sitting here, we are looking at permeability through the joints and also through the concrete. Now, this is very important if we do not have any normal concrete at the interface, if this entire concrete was cast in layers. So, in this kind of a situation of course, permeability of the concrete is a very very major consideration. However, if the concrete was cast in a manner that this layer or this lift of concrete along the height of the dam is cast with conventional concrete that is it is not cast in layers as is shown here. In that case we are not so much bothered about the permeability of the roller compacted concrete. Now, coming to curing of the RCC the layers of RCC should be normally cured that is there is no reason to believe that the curing can be done or needs to be done any differently. It should be ensured that successive layer is not cast on a dry layer of concrete because as it is the amount of water present in a concrete is less and if that water too gets absorbed in a previously cast lift it is likely to lead to a poor quality construction. So, we must make sure that the previous lift is not necessarily wet, but is such that it will not absorb more water. Special care needs to be taken in curing the final lift. Initial lifts it is alright, because more concrete will get cast on that, but as far as the final lift is concerned we need to control the moisture conditions for a much longer period of time and ensure proper hydration of the lifts. Even though the area is large use of curing compounds may not be very effective in the case of roller compacted concrete construction as the surface is often rough and it may not be possible to provide full coverage of the compound throughout the large surface area. So, even though we may like to do it or it helps us if we can simply spread a curing compound on the surface 
but unfortunately in roller compacted concrete that is not always possible. Now coming to the properties of this specially cast or specially compacted concrete is concerned the fundamental rules of normal concrete apply with some modifications with little water to begin with there is practically no bleeding or shrinkage in this concrete. Of course properties such as creep coefficients of expansion specific heat and conductivity which are important from the point of view of thermal stress generation these properties are strongly determined by the properties and the proportions of the coarse aggregate and that is at a much larger volume than normal concrete. Permeability of concrete is sometimes a critical property and there could be a difference of several orders of magnitude in a construction given the method of construction. So, the method of construction that we have is gross that is it need not be ensuring that the properties at the micro level or at the level of a very small element are the same throughout the concrete, but we only ensure that by and large the properties of concrete are the same. So, if we actually carry out measurements of strength or permeability we will find that there is a reasonable amount of variation as far as these properties are concerned. Of course, compressive strength is related to water cement ratio in conventional RCC that is if the proportions have been carried out in a high paste regime that is using the traditional reinforced concrete or the concrete proportioning approach, but it is sometimes shown in relation to the moisture content in the mixes where the proportioning is based on soil compaction. Some studies where compressive strengths were obtained using cores from Canadian projects showed that the strength of concrete varies between 25 and 35 MPa in these projects. Now, this here shows how should specimens be prepared as far as roller compacted concretes are concerned. Now, given that roller compacted concretes are not internally vibrated, it makes no sense to internally vibrate the cylinders that are used for quality control in roller compacted concretes. So, what we do here is we use a specially designed vibrating hammer to prepare the cylinder and that is more or less the same effect as a vibratory roller and this vibratory hammer being applied at the surface of the concrete in the cylinder. Tensile strength is an important property as far as pavement construction is concerned and some researchers are of the view that in RCC that is when using roller compacted concretes the strength should be determined using cores where we determine the split tensile cylinder and not necessarily from the flexural test of beams. Now the reason for that is something which I would like to leave to you to ponder about and think. This picture here shows the cores from the roller compacted concrete construction. Now coming to bond strength that is the strength at the interface of the lifts. This could be a critical property and will determine whether or not the RCC construction which is done in multiple lifts behaves as a single unit or behaves monolithically or not. And in order to ensure good properties across that interface we could carry out operations such as spreading some grout or mortar before the next lift is cast or we could carry out surface preparation exercises on the previous lift before the fresh lift is cast. So, as to ensure that the previous lift and the next lift they are properly bonded. We did talk about density a little bit and in certain cases this value could be the part of the specifications of the RCC. It can be measured in situ using a suitable device and using a mock up trial the minimum passes of a roller may be determined. So, in the mock up that precedes actual construction we may determine or estimate that in order to get a certain density of the concrete what is the number of passes that are required. So, if we plot the number of passes 
to the density of the concrete that we obtain, it is likely that we will get a relationship which is something like this, that beyond a certain point having more and more passes is relatively ineffective, that is it is not contributing to the change in the density, but in this regime having more passes is indeed effective as far as achieving higher densities is concerned. And this is the kind of test that we need to carry out in order to determine what should be the minimum number of passes as far as the roller is concerned or given a set of equipment and a type of concrete and so on. Effort should also be made to relate the density measured to that actually obtained using cores and finally to the compressive strength of the concrete. If we are able to carry out this exercise, then we have actually closed the loop as far as quality control in RCC or roller compacted concrete is concerned. Now, this here is the measurement of density of RCC or the in situ measurement of density using a gamma densitometer. Coming to a close of our discussion today, let us take back some questions, make a list of projects where roller compacted concrete has been used in dam construction. We could make a similar list of projects where this concrete has been used in pavements and obtain details of a vibratory roller and study the effect of the choice of this roller on the properties of concrete. There are several other things which we have alluded to in our discussion today and they can also help us better understand roller compacted concrete. Thank you. Thank you.